Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the BCIT 101 General Information Session. So before we get started, I'd like to first acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish people, which includes the Squamish, Musqueam, and tsleil tooth nations. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Zara al Otman, and I'm a program advisor for the British Columbia Institute of Technology. We are looking forward to providing you with some information on the changes that we've made during these unprecedented times. We've put together this session tonight as we know many people are still considering going to school in September, but recognize that you may have questions or concerns about what it will look like. So after a brief overview of BCIT's programming, We'll share a bit about the different delivery modes, how we're keeping students and staff safe, and how we are supporting remote learning and well-being. We'll also hear from a student who made the transition from classroom to remote learning this past spring. We've got some speakers lined up to help with this, as well as a number of staff available behind the scenes to answer your questions. For some of you, this may be your first time attending an online information session. We're using Zoom's webinar product this evening. This means that all of you can see me and the speakers, but we can't see or hear you. However, please feel free to ask questions throughout the ses session using the Q&A feature. You'll see it either at the bottom center or on the side of your screen. Your question will come into the panel and we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can. It would help us out if you could state if you're a domestic or international student and if possible, what program you're interested in when asking your question. This will ensure that we give you the most accurate information. So this evening, we are fortunate enough to have Dr. Sonia Boscovic, the Associate Dean of our Aerospace Programs within the School of Transportation, Carolyn Depetit, the Associate Dean of Business Administration within the School of Business and Media, Lester de Guzman, who is a recent marketing grad, and finally, we have Dr. Chris Rogerson, Director of Student Success. I am also joined by some of my colleagues from Program Advising, as well as other department representatives who are on hand to answer any questions that you have throughout and at the end of the session. So without further ado, let's get started. So right now is a great time to head back to school. BCIT is one of the largest post-secondaries in BC. We offer over 300 full and part-time programs in applied and natural sciences, business and media, computing and IT, engineering, health sciences, and trades. Over 50,000 students choose BCIT each year. Our faculty work closely with industry, delivering training, providing expert advice, and helping to bring ideas to market. You'll learn from instructors that have strong industry connections and have worked in the industry that they teach into. Employers recognize the efforts that go behind achieving a BCIT credential, and they know that our grads are job ready. So BCIT programs will be delivered primarily online this fall. Some programs and courses include components that require applied learning and where that is the case, faculty will be notifying students on program web pages that some attendance is required on campus. We are developing remote and in-person solutions specific to the unique needs of programs and are taking all measures to ensure your safety and well-being. We will continue to deliver the instructor support and availability, applied instruction, collaborative experience, and industry connections that you can expect from a BCIT credential. So having said that, when in-person classes do resume, it's important to note that we will and always have maintained small class sizes. 16 to 25 students is the maximum class size you'll be in for the duration of your studies. Our small class sizes mean you'll also receive support and attention from your instructors. So these small class sizes in full-time studies are called cohorts, which is essentially a small group of students. You'll take your classes within that same cohort. 
This gives you an opportunity to collaborate, gain some practical teamwork skills, and receive support from your peers or classmates. So let's talk a bit about the types of credentials that we offer. BCIT offers certificates, diplomas, degrees, and even master's degrees, but we're different than a college or university. We're a polytechnic institute, and that means that our programs focus on team-based learning and applied education. At BCIT, we offer both full and part-time study options. You decide which option best suits your needs. Full-time studies allows you to take a full set of courses and you're automatically registered in all the courses you need. Part-time studies gives you flexibility. You can take a single course or work towards a credential at a pace that's right for you. If there's a prerequisite and you meet it, you just go ahead and register for the course. So as you can see over here, BCIT graduates have a high success rate in finding employment. BCIT maintains strong connection to industry, and they recognize and understand the work that goes into earning a BCIT credential. So let's briefly talk about BCIT's areas of study and some specific programs that we offer. Our first area of studies is Applied and Natural Sciences. Here we offer over 30 programs. The career paths in Applied and Natural Sciences are incredibly diverse. For example, you could take a program to become a Sustainable Resource Manager, Nautical Sciences Officer, Public Health Inspector, or even a Provincial Park Ranger. We also offer the most comprehensive Forensic Science program in Canada. Our next area of studies is our business and media sector. BCIT is one of the largest business and media schools in Western Canada. We have programs that lead to professional designations in accounting, human resources, financial planning, and project management, just to name a few. We also have one of the largest, most specialized marketing programs in Canada. And we are the only institute in BC that offers a diploma in general insurance and risk management and one in graphic communication technology management, as well as a graduate certificate in business analytics. We offer some exciting media programs. For instance, this slide right over here is our television and video production program. And the instructor is teaching students how to use 360 degree video technology. When travel restrictions do ease, we also offer opportunities to do an international field school where you can learn, receive credits, and immerse yourself into the local culture. Up next, we have computing and IT at BCIT. We're the largest provincial provider of computing courses and applied, applied diploma grads. BCIT plays a large role in supporting high-tech business in BC. We offer over 30 different applied programs with a reputation for job-ready grads. We also offer a new industrial network cybersecurity program, and it's the first of its kind in Canada. Next is our many engineering programs we offer at BCIT. We have our fully accredited Bachelor of Engineering programs in civil, electrical, mechanical, and mining. We're the main provider of industrial instrumentation, millwright, and power engineering programs in BC. Our Bachelor of Engineering in Mining and Mineral Resource Engineering and our Master's Degree in Building Science are the only programs of their kind in Western Canada. Hey.
Health Sciences is our next area of studies. Offering 32 health-related programs, many are diagnostic programs with strong employment opportunities. Most can be completed in two years. We offer specialized programs, such as diagnostic medical sonography, medical radiography, and nursing. Some of these programs are advanced programs that you would consider after completing some post-secondary prerequisites. Our last area of studies is our trades, technical, and apprenticeship programs. We offer more trades training programs than any other school in BC. Programs including electrical, carpentry, joinery, metal fabrication, piping, sheet metal, ironworking, boilermaker, marine fitting, and welding. And that's just to name a few. Next, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Sonia Boscovic, who is the Associate Dean of Aerospace Programs. Thank you, Zara. Uh, what a lovely uh, explanation. Uh, my name is Sanya Boskovic, and as Zara says, I'm an associate dean at the Aerospace Campus at the BCIT. And I would like to thank you for joining us this lovely evening and uh, trying to explore the way to become the member of our BCIT family. And that's important, you see, being BCIT family, and that's how we like to treat our students. So, as Zara said, we will actually this uh, uh, fall deliver our programs applying different mode and different delivering mode. And one of them, Zara, please, can you just go on another one? Thank you very much. It's a blended and online delivery. Uh, online delivery as a, you know, full online delivery, my colleague Caroline is actually going to explain, but I'm going to concentrate on the blended one. And what does it mean, blended one? It means that we have, you know, opportunity to deliver portion of uh, our education online and we have obligation to our uh, regulated body and our quality of education to deliver in a person, which includes a lot of labs and shops. But how are we going to do that and keep everybody safe? And if that includes not only labs and shops, it includes actually the testing process because some of our jurisdiction body as a Transport Canada or safety authority, they really don't uh, like to have online uh, testing. So they really want to have face-to-face -face testing. So we deliver and uh, we develop the, the process that will actually keep all our members, our students, our faculty and our staff safe. So we have a little clip which we actually post on our D2L. We call that D2L. It's a learning hub where um, introduce how you're going to actually take that uh, uh, testing in a face-to-face -face, uh, 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 setting so that we keep you safe. You know you come and we just did a little movie so that make you entertain so that it's not dry and boring, you know, with all lines and reading. So we really like to uh, uh, keep you busy. And another part, you know, we want uh, you to come to our labs. And um, in order to do that, we have to keep you safe. We need to follow all the rules and regulations that are required by our safety officer at, in the BC. So you can see on this slide, you know, one of our students passing through the labs, but they have, you know, those dividers. Look at those portable dividers. They still can see every piece, every equipment, but we keep them safe. Zara, can you please move on another one? Great. BCIT is guided, obviously, by principle to uh, keep our health and well-being on all our students and faculty and the staff. And doing that, you can see on your right, uh, left side, you know, we just designed the workspace, workbenches where you're going to be, you know, safe. And yet, you're going to be kind of in a contact with all your peers. But we want you to be contact, in the contact with our faculty members. And you can see on our 
right side, how we innovatively introduce new methods, you know. So we put the just a plexiglass divider between the, our faculty member and the students, and we want that connection, right? We want you to feel the passion of our faculty members, how they're going to deliver, how they're going to explain the things, and yet to keep you safe. Another method which we're exploring is, you know, maybe a little bit close to your heart. It's an educational technology that you're going to use like a spy. You know, it's going to be the little uh, uh, glasses with the little camera which connect with the Bluetooth, connect to your uh, iPhone, and then you're going to see what your faculty member is going to do. But it's going to be in a person. So that contact we will establish, that chemistry that we really like to establish between our faculties and students and between students is going to happen but it's gonna be in following the safe manner. When I said the blended, you know, I still then kind of defined, okay, how much we're gonna deliver the theory and how much we're going to deliver the practical. That depends on the programs and you will actually talk to your program advisory and the program area, you know, how much is that? In some area it might be 50% on the theory, 50% on uh, uh, in a class, in some, 60 40 that depends and what does it mean theory you know that's the portion that's academical piece which we need to prepare you in order to be also safe you know and understand how the process are going in the labs so that is going to be delivered using the different platforms is it going to be the you know uh, uh, synchronized unsynchronized so that depends again on uh, program area and the more about that will actually be delivered by caroline and finally Zara, can you please? The, uh, the last thing which I want you to do is to go on our website and check uh, the amazing work that is done by different areas, trades and technology areas. And one of them is automotive, another one is a carpentry. And I think, you know, now we have more and more areas that actually uh, posted, you know, how we would like to bring you on a campus, deliver face to face, deliver hands on, which is our bread and butter. But yet, keep you safe. And as our officer always saying, you know, stay calm, stay kind, kind, and stay the safe. Thank you very much and have a good night. We are looking forward to seeing you in our labs and online. Thanks. Thank you, Sonia. I would next like to welcome Carolyn Depati, the Associate Dean of Business Administration. Thank you, Zara, for introducing me. And wow, what a great turnout tonight. This is awesome. So I'm really, I feel privileged and honored to uh, be able to present to you. And thank you, San uh, Sonia, for all your information. So I basically just have a few minutes to talk to you about uh, what does remote learning really look like. Online doesn't mean on your own. Different areas, different programs, different schools will, will do different things uh, in the fall. But you can just may, um, go to the next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. Oh, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. Caroline DePetzi, Associate Dean for the Business Administration School of Business and Media. I think you, you did introduce uh, me, but okay. So first slide, um, most of your courses are going to be on what we call the Learning Hub, which is our course online support sites. Um, it used to be called D2L, Desire to Learn, so some instructors still call it that, but it's called the Learning Hub. So for each course that you have, you'll have a Learning Hub site. Lots of information on the Learning Hub. That's where you might have some online discussions with your instructors, with your peers. Um, this is what might be where you're gonna upload assignments, where you're gonna have some of your quizzes, uh, when news posts are gonna be posted, where the content of your assignment, you can follow uh, You know your content and what's going on. With many of our courses uh, being online in the fall, I know in the School of Business, the majority of our courses will be online. The Learning Hub will definitely be our community of learning. That's where we're gonna, we're gonna meet. The other piece that we can do on the Learning Hub is we can have virtual classrooms, which means that we can meet with you to deliver uh, content, uh, which brings me to kind of the lower part here. Um, and Sonia said these words, she mentioned synchronous, and I think asynchronous. What synchronous means is delivering content live. And asynchronous means that perhaps you're going to be watching videos that the instructors will have recorded for you and meet in a synchronous way 
to do activities, to do group work, uh, and that will all be done through the Learning Hub or some instructor might be using uh, Zoom. So we're definitely encouraging our instructors in the school of business to have a bit of a hybrid mode where uh, there is some synchronous delivery along with asynchronous. The last thing we want you to do is uh, stand, you know, be in front of a computer for all your courses. So then you get screen fatigue. So we are encouraging some asynchronous piece as well. Um, but we do feel that the synchronous live lectures, live activities, live meetings are going to be really, really important. Um, so I'll just get you to do uh, go in the next slide. Uh, I titled the slide, Don't Miss Out, Say Yes to What is Happening, either with your program, your school, or at institute levels. In the fall, there's going to be, <coughs> excuse me, many different things happening. Uh, there's going to be orientation. I know the um, Office of Student Life is, is planning like a, a site where you can go to to get information about what's happening on campus. Um, I think we'll, you'll hear a little bit more about that later. In the School of Business this summer, we have what we call our Summer Student Success Webinar Series. Actually, there's one happening right now. So this is why I'm going to zip out after this because I have to monitor this other uh, webinar. But we're delivering every uh, week a different topic. This week was online learning and, and best practices. Um, we're pre-recording these so students that are coming into the School of Business can um, listen to the, either join us live every Monday or Tuesday evening or listen to the recording so that they can best be prepared when they're um, arriving in the fall. So it's going to be really important for us to, to do a community of learning, to connect you with your instructor, again, with some asynchronous piece, to connect you with your, with your peers. Um, so we're going to do that as much as we can and really look uh, forward to it. So um, I think that's, I'm going to leave it at that, Zara. I think I've talked about everything. Um, there may be questions later on, and I'm happy if anybody wants to send me something as well. Thank, Thank you. you Car awesome. Thank you, Carolyn. Next, I'll pass it over to Lester de Guzman, who is a recent marketing management graduate. Hi. Thank you, Sarah. Hi, everyone. My name is Lester, and I'm a recent BCIT grad of, uh, with a marketing management diploma on marketing communications. I saw that there was a question on the um, Q&A where it says, like, what's the fall is going to be like? And basically, my last term of BCIT was the one that I didn't expect, and I hope through this time, you could actually learn and maybe I could provide you some tips on how to become successful on this coming term. So during my last term at BCIT, it wasn't what I expected. Mid-March this year, I was about to start my 10-week plan internship, attend my last courses in person, and then basically celebrate my graduation in June with my family, friends, and classmates. However, the unthinkable happened. Basically, COVID-19 happened in our lives. Um, my internship got canceled as a result uh, my courses and projects were all delivered online, and I had to attend a convocation through the screen of my computer. I know this was unexpected. However, I had to adapt to the new normal. BCIT's practical uh, training has helped me become more flexible, ready, and more resilient to move to the online courses. Um, as you can see on the screen, I, I want to share with you a quote from Henry Ford that says, if, you're always, if you always do what you always done, you've always get what you've always got. So before, I always thought that um, the best way for me to learn was an in-class in or in-person classroom interaction. But COVID-19 forced me to learn and think differently. As a result, I felt like I gained so much. Uh, as a result, I had to go online. And with that, I was able to like, gain more experience and gain more, um, I was able to gain more uh, knowledge through this experience. So now I will share with you um, some benefits of online learning and tips to help you become successful. So I understand that most of you are hesitant to start the term because the majority of your classes are done online. However, online learning helps uh, you become uh, improve your, to improve your skills and knowledge in different digital tools and platforms to communicate. For example, using Zoom, writing persuasive emails, or online tools that can help you become better professional during your social distancing. Um, today, I actually had a meeting on Zoom, and most of my colleagues didn't know how to operate in Zoom. And for me, I was able to initiate and be like, hey, I know how to, do, to work all those stuff. So those are the few benefits I've learned through Zoom. 
Um, second, transitioning to online learning has also helped you become more flexible and adaptable. At any schoolwork or your future job, you'll always have to roll with the punches and with the way you, with the way you work and the way you communicate. And um, basically, BCIT and this COVID-19 has really helped me um, transition to an online learning. Um, third is um, sometimes it's also uh, it, it, it's better to be comfortable. Like if you're in your bedroom or you're in a living room, um, you become more productive. So let's so online learning actually helps you to do that. Um, so say goodbye to long hours transiting or getting getting to school because now you can jump in and out of your classroom in the comfort of your pajamas, like basically anytime and anywhere. And lastly, uh, BCIT continues its commitment to provide practical education from experienced instructors. Um, and through this process, I learned that my teachers are even more helpful and encouraging when it comes to learning and um, delivering the materials online. Um, they are more than dedicated to supporting students in the best way they can on their maximum capacity. So how do we actually make ourselves uh, become successful in this uh, transition? Um, so I'm providing some tips of how, um, how, what I've learned and how I hope it will help you become successful as you transition to online learning. Remember to use APEC. So first is be accountable um, in everything that you do by attending your virtual classes, submitting your online assignments on time, and participating in group meetings. So like what, um, what they've said that um, the online learning has been live and sometimes pre-recorded, basically make yourself accountable in attending those. Um, start practicing your professionalism and uh, good work ethics because um, you're only accountable of your time, your thoughts, and your actions. Second, plan your day. Set a daily routine and make sure you use your time wisely. It is easy to get distracted with social media like your Facebook or Netflix. So in my personal experience, I suggest that you do not open those um, social media platforms. Create a daily plan of your classes, homework, and study time, and make sure to try your best to stick with them as much as you can. Um, third is don't forget to uh, include exercise in your schedule because um, exercise can help you improve your physical and mental health. Take a break from school if you need to and focus on yourself. Do what you enjoy best. Maybe do a yoga for like five minutes or just dance or go to the gym, run or hike, depending on what you like. So just take note of exercise is also important. Um, fourth is uh, stay physically distant, but most especially stay socially connected. Aside from your family and friends, you have a support system at BCIT. I highly encourage you to join a club or seek an available service given by the BCIT Student Association. Um, sorry about the noise. Um, Try to reach out your uh, try to reach out to your instructors, BCIT alumni. Sorry, let me repeat that. So reach out to your instructors, BCIT alumni, staff, classmates, and teachers if you need help or guidance. Among all people, they understand what you're going through. And lastly, uh, be kind. Be kind to your classmates, to your teachers, and especially to yourself. As you start your journey at BCIT, you may feel stress and and a lot of anxiety. Um, this makes learning a little bit harder and challenging um, as you all here uh, because we're all here to support and guide you in advancing your career. Um, so always be kind to yourself and to others and you will find that the kindness will amplify every day. Um, so by applying those skills that may be this tips, um, I'm able to confidently apply for a job after graduation and luckily I landed into a job despite the hardships of businesses during this complex world. So I hope my experience can resonate towards yours, and I hope your experience at BCIT will be as positive as what I felt. Thank you for your time, and hope to see you in the fall. Thank you, Lester. I would now like to invite Dr. Chris Rogerson, who is the Director of Student Success at BCIT. Hey, everybody. Uh, before I begin, I would really like to thank Lester. I, he speaks so eloquently of all of the great supports and the uh, opportunities that come from being a BCIT student. So thanks for that wonderful advice, Lester, and congratulations on uh, completing your program and finding the job. That's something that we're all looking forward to, and it's a great success. 
You've heard from all of the wonderful speakers that BCIT is really an amazing experience where you have a cohort of faculty, staff, peers who are there to make sure that you succeed and have a quality experience. And that doesn't change with us having online or blended uh, learning. And so I wanted to tell you about a couple of different uh, things that are happening to make sure that our ongoing experience for our students remains to be a high level of quality experience that leads to experiences like Lester that where people get to experience finding that, uh, that job or that next step in their, uh, their journey. Um, if I could move to the next slide, please. So I wanted to talk about a couple of areas that we have that are always available for our students, but what's happening now. One of them is our student life area. You heard from Carolyn about online student success classes for BC, uh, for BC School of Business and Media students. We also, uh, there will be an option which is called the Student Success Hub, which will be a, a central location where students can, on our learning platform, get resources, supports, and uh, ways to help them navigate this post um, and online learning time. And additionally, if you use Facebook on our um, Student Life Facebook page, they have BCIT Hangouts where you can listen to interviews done by students with different expertise experts at BCIT about things that maybe would be good for them to know. So I encourage you to check those out. We also will continue to find and, uh, and have and create ways for students to be able to connect with each other uh, throughout their program. For those of you who are wanting or needing housing, we do have housing at BCIT. It is a limited housing uh, and usually very limited, uh, but at this additional time to make sure for safety, there will be reduced spaces. So if you do need housing, please do make sure to apply as soon as you can. We also have our Center for Workplace Education. I've seen a couple of questions about co-op. We continue to have uh, quality co-op opportunities for our students. This is because BCIT students and our graduates are really in demand, and so people really want to have an opportunity to work with them prior to them completing. So our CST program uh, and great opportunities. We also provide a job board called eJobs uh, for students, specifically for employers that are looking to hire BCIT programs, and that continues, and we're still continuing to see great people posting and wanting BCIT graduates and current students. We also have our Indigenous service that continues to provide a welcoming space for our Indigenous learners and those well, uh, interested in learning and, and connecting more with our Indigenous um, plan and our uh, communities. And so they are continue to be available, as is our International uh, Student Centre. The International Student Centre provides support and guidance to our uh, many international students, but also provides them with, uh, right now, there is great resources online, uh, some webinars, but they will continue to to provide welcoming supports, but also uh, ways for people to be able to connect with different programs and events that will continue for our international students uh, and our domestic students moving forward. COVID has presented a unique uh, and fi uh, financial challenge for some people, and so our uh, great people in student financial aid and awards can provide some guidance and support. Uh, around that, I've already seen some questions around different scholarships and bursaries uh, and awards that are available. So if, by checking out our website, there is options that are available for our students. Uh, if you need any support with guidance around uh, financing your education, uh, they, uh, our team provides, uh, continues to provide great support virtually and online for our students. We heard from Lester about... Um, that this can be a challenging time, but at the same time, we have great wraparound supports in our counseling and student development. We have always provided virtual uh, abilities for our students at our multiple campuses could access our great uh, counseling team and so uh, to help with support in your um, personal growth and development. And so that continues to be made uh, available and supporting our students. And we work very closely with our students association to provide uh, various different opportunities that support people's mental health and well-being throughout the year. You'll also see, you may or may not know this, but we actually have a fully operational medical clinic on campus with uh, nurses as well as doctors, but as well as a psychiatrist. Remains open and available to support students during this time. 
Some of you may come with uh, accommodation needs or, uh, or uh, disabilities that need uh, to be addressed and our accessibility services remains available. So we always encourage that if you have a, a, an accommodation requirement, please contact our accessibility services uh, early and they can support uh, you in your learning. Whether it's online or in person, we have those supports that are made available. So contact them uh, early as possible. Our recreation services, while our uh, rec facilities are currently closed, we are looking to see how we might be able to provide them opening. Our gym uh, is currently not open, but we do uh, look forward to when we can return safely to our intramural sports or what have you. But we do have an amazing uh, online uh, Healthy at Home program. We've got over hundreds of people each week that are participating in our various uh, online recreation classes, ways to stay fit and healthy. And we're doing activities with people in their Zoom classes to how can we stay healthy during that time. Uh, if we move to our next um, slide, what this slide shows is kind of one of the things that you heard from me. Your health and well-being is really important to us uh, and to your peers and to everybody. So we, throughout the year and continuing now, we will find and we always do continue to find ways to provide ways to support you as a whole person to make sure that you are uh, ready and able to meet the challenges of your program. Finally, moving to our last slide, the the thing about the BCIT experience uh, is making sure that it is about involvement. The wonderful thing about uh, BCIT is the cohort and your peers and your faculty, and it really creates an amazing uh, cohort of students who have ways to connect with each other and opportunities, and that really is the cornerstone of the BCIT experience. And that will not change, and it will just look different, like uh, Lester was saying. It'll look different, and how can we do it differently? And so there'll be ways for you to engage with people with similar similar likes or within your program because it is about those applied connections. You heard about the wonderful things that are happening in our academics. You will still have that applied hands-on virtual learning space that is supported by your student association in all um, different areas of the institution because it will lead to your success. Why you chose your BCIT program, your future goals, all of those will continue to be supported and I really look forward to meeting you one day when you make your choice to come to BCIT. So I will pass it back over to Zara. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining. Great. Thank you, Chris. Okay. So let's talk more about applying to a program at BCIT. So over here, we have an example of a program landing or opening page. So you can see on the right-hand side, there are several tabs with excellent resources, including courses, program details, and graduating and jobs information. I'd like to t highlight one tab in particular, Program Entry. This is where you'll find information regarding the entrance requirements as well as application dates. It will also tell you if your program is non-competitive, competitive, or a trades entry program. Non-competitive is first qualified, first accepted, as long as you meet the minimum entrance requirements. Competitive means you may need higher grades to be considered for a seat in the program or even some post-secondary. I always recommend that you connect with a program advisor for advice if your program follows a competitive entry model. Trades program entry means that we basically accept applications on an ongoing basis year-round. So applying to BCIT is really easy and the process is entirely online. Step one is choosing your program. As I mentioned before, review BCIT's programs to find the program that fits your goals. Step two is ensuring that you meet the entrance requirements. You must meet the minimum requirements for your program to be considered. As mentioned previously, view your program's program entry page for the entrance requirements. Please remember, at BCIT, each program has its own unique set of entrance requirements. Step three is preparing your application. And once you've prepared your application, you can move on to step four, which is submitting your application online. Scan your supporting documents into a PDF and then upload them to your application. The application fee is $90 for a domestic student and $154 for an international student. Your last step is to check your application status. 
Once you've submitted your application, you can check your application status in your MyBCIT account. The current processing time for non-competitive programs is one week and four to six weeks for competitive programs. So I'd like to take this opportunity to show you how to find programs that are currently accepting applications. So I'm gonna share our website with you. So over here, this is our homepage, bcit.ca. There are so many great resources on this page as well as lots of information if you navigate through the tabs. So up here you see some tabs. If you hover over admission, you can go to program availability. Just scroll down. Over here you see a legend. It explains what each icon means. So there are so many ways to navigate through this page. First, you can simply just scroll down the page and look at all the programs and if they're open and when the intakes are. I do want to note that in the next couple of days, you'll see that if the program, um, if it's blended or online, it'll be updated on here. Another thing you can do is if you're looking for a program for this September, just filter the results to programs that are open. And so this lists all of our programs that are still accepting applications. So we've got quite a few programs that are still doing that, as you can see over here. If you want to narrow it down even further, let's say you're looking for a specific intake like September 2020, I recommend typing SEP. What this does is it filters out any program with a September intake. So as you can see, all the programs with a September intake are shown. If you have a specific program in mind, let's say, for example, I want to apply to geomatics, I'm just going to type in geomatics over here. And you can see that both the diploma and the bachelor program are accepting applications for this September. Another great resource that can be found on this page, if you scroll up, is admission during COVID-19. So I'm just going to click on that. It opens up a new page. Scroll down a little bit. You see this yellow banner over here. There's a PDF that is linked. And so this PDF outlines all of our programs and whether they're being delivered online or if there's a blended delivery method this fall. Scroll down a bit further and we have our frequently asked questions. So these are questions pertaining, pertaining to these times during COVID-19. So if you have a question, you might be able to find the answer over here. So I'm just going to sneak back out and go back to my presentation. So aside from all the programs that um, you can view on that page, I do want to mention some of our featured programs. So all of our featured programs still have space for September 2020. So we have some programs in the applied and natural sciences sector as well as the engineering sector if you're interested in sustainable energy, mining, land surveying, or environmental engineering. There's also an honors in biotechnology program that offers a co-op work placement. Some of these programs are bachelor programs, and we even have two master's programs that are currently available. Adding on to our list of featured programs, we have some marketing and business management programs that are still open. Interested in computing and IT sector? We have a couple of programs that land you a BCIT credential in less than a year, as well as a Bachelor of Technology option in games development. Don't worry, we will be sending you an email after this session with hyperlinks to all of these programs so that you can explore and learn more. So, still got questions? You might want to attend an online program information session similar to this one, but it will give you opportunities to talk with the program instruct instructors and staff, and you'll get all your questions answered directly by those who will be teaching you. Other ways to connect with us, check out our Facebook, our Instagram, our Twitter, or our YouTube. There are many program videos on YouTube if you're still wanting to learn more after today.
So if you have any additional questions after today, I want to encourage you to connect with Program Advising. You can give us a call Monday to Friday as indicated. You can also email us your inquiry or request a virtual Zoom appointment by emailing program underscore advising at bcit.ca. We're able to answer questions on admissions, the application process, resources, success strategies, program schedules, and many other questions as well. And after this session, you will be directly linked to our program advising contact us page. So I'd like to now give you the opportunity to ask any questions that you have. I know that uh, some of my colleagues have been answering questions along the way. Um, as I previously mentioned, we have program advisors as well as department representatives that are here to help. Good evening, everyone. I'm gonna now just have a few questions that we commonly get asked directed to some of our representatives that are here today. Um, we've got lots of great questions that have been asked, many questions that we've addressed online already. Forgive us if we weren't properly able to answer your question because of the way the feature is set up. If you asked a question and then we asked you a question, we kind of lose the synergy in between. So if you found that we weren't able to answer your question as you asked, please resend your question to program underscore advising at bcit.ca and we will get back to you. Or you can submit it now, but ensure that you put your program name and your question in the same question box so that we can respond to it appropriately. So the first question I have is for Stephanie. Stephanie, could you please give us an update on upcoming dates, deadline dates for scholarships, awards, bursaries, the student loan application, please? Sure. So uh, probably the biggest announcement right now is the student loan application for students who would be applying through BC has finally gone live as of July 15th. So students who need to apply for uh, financial aid, either for full-time or part-time funding, um, can go to the Student Aid BC website, which is www.studentaidbc.ca. Um, in terms of students who are taking part-time programs, as, as you've heard, uh, we offer a number of programs. And so if you're looking at applying for part-time or full-time funding for those programs, I would encourage you to go to our financial aid website where we have a list of all the programs that are eligible for student loans and take a look there to see if your program is listed. Um, for those who may have been on student loans before and are going to come back um, for funding this year, just to let folks know that the federal, go federal government in particular really recognized the challenges that COVID has caused not only for students but their families as well. And so there have been um, a one-time only significant increase to the financial aid available for students this year. Uh, of the grants have been doubled for the year and the weekly loan limits have been increased. So there is that funding available for students as well, and there's also been some changes to how much students and their families are expected to contribute as well for this year. Um, in terms of uh, entrance awards, um, we have those available for incoming students. The deadline right now is August 5th and you can find the application on our website which is www.bcit.ca slash finaid. Um, you can find the application there to complete. If you have questions about the application, I would suggest that you contact our awards team in our office, which would be awards at bcit.ca. Great, thanks, Stephanie. The next question is for Basel. Um, so we've received questions regarding the temporary English tests that we are currently accepting at the moment. Um, could you please give us an update for how long we'll be accepting these tests? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Marinder. So we have lots of tests we accept right now as a lot of the English uh, language testing fingers are closed or temporarily closed. Uh, so we're going to be continuing to accept these tests as long as the situation continues. Uh, there is no end date that has been uh, set yet. Um, I mean, 
the students and applicants, I hope everybody understands that we are here to help them meet entrance requirements. We're here to help you uh, to meet entry requirements so while ensuring you are successful in your program. So as long as we have them on the website, they will be accepted. Um, and should there come a day when they're longer accepted, we will have a buffer period, a transition period, uh, quite long to make sure that people are not uh, inconveniently uh, inconvenienced. Great. Thanks, Basel. Yeah. The next question is for Lexi. Um, Lexi, could you give us an update on the current application processing times for applicants that will be applying in the next couple of days? Yeah, sure. It actually depends on which program you're applying for. If it's a first qualified, first accepted program that you're applying for, you will probably hear back from us uh, regarding your application status within a few days to uh, a couple of weeks. But if you're applying for a competitive entry program, it may take longer. All decisions will be made after the application deadline. And note that department review may be required, so it may take uh, a few weeks until you hear back from us regarding our application status. Thank you. Thanks. And the, I believe one of the last questions we have is for Michael. Um, Michael, can you give us an update? Will international students require a study permit if they are studying online outside of Canada? Thank you. Um, no, actually at this point we're, uh, we have made the uh, decision to allow students to start their programs while they are overseas. Of course, it has to be a program that is 100% online. Uh, the good news also is that the, uh, the government, the IRCC, has also announced that this will not affect the students' postgraduate work permit. As long as uh, they have applied, to, um, applied for a study permit, the duration of the uh, postgraduate work permit will not be affected either. So it's a it's a very good situation for international students if they are if they want to start the program from overseas. It is possible, and uh, it's a very good situation for you this this time. Thank you. That's great news. Um, I think that's it for sort of the common questions that we receive. If anybody in the, our panelists that are here today. If any of you have any information that you'd like to share with our audience, please take this opportunity. Um, I'll have, keep my eye out to see if anybody puts their hand up. Any frequently asked questions that you're receiving that you want to share with the audience? Okay. So one thing I'll remind everybody is we do have a great resource online. Um, if you're not sure how your program is going to be delivered, um, there's a website that you can go to. So admissions during COVID-19, and there is a PDF there uh, that talks about the learning mode. It tells you if your program is going to be online or it's going to be blended learning, etc. And all the programs for the fall uh, 2021 are listed on there. So great resource for students uh, to go check out. Um, and uh, another update as well is that um, if you're not sure, try it out, right? Um, one reminder for all the students that there is that your uh, deadline for, um, for tuition refund, I think for the website is 10 days after the program start date. So that means you get to try the program for those days to see if that is a learning mode that suits you. Thanks for that, Basel. Um, I think I'm going to pass it over to Zara now, who will leave you with some information of how you can access us if you have questions after today's session. Thank you. Thank you, Meninder. Yeah, so if you do have any questions after today, um, or if we didn't get to answering your question, don't worry, we have your information. Otherwise, immediately after the session ends, um, it will connect you to our contact us on the BCIT website. So you can send program advising an email um, at program under score advising at bcit.ca, or you can call us during our live call service, and that information is on that website as well. And before I let you all go, I did want to say a few thank yous. Um, so first off, I'd like to say thank you to all of our presenters for joining us this evening to share their expertise um, and their knowledge with you. Next, I'd like to say thank you to all of our panelists for joining us tonight and for um, everyone who answered questions along the way and at the end of the session. 
And lastly, I want to say thank you to you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know it's such a beautiful evening, um, but thank you for taking the time out of your evening to learn more about BCIT. Um, just remember that we're here to help. We're here to support your education and that we look forward to connecting to you soon. So I believe that we're going to stay online for a few minutes, uh, just if anybody has additional questions. Um, otherwise, you are free to go. Thank you so much.